Hi, I'm Patrick from Douglas Fur Design. Welcome to the Router Bits. There's a ton of routing applications where you're running end grain along the fence and that poses a bunch of problems. Uh, alignment, stopping the board from wobbling and safety, stopping the board from kicking back because you don't have a big reference area. And one of the main issues is tear out on the rear side. Now, all of these problems can be solved in a couple different ways, but the simplest way I think is getting yourself a decent coping sled. Coping jigs can operate in a number of ways. The one that we built, and there's a video for, to build it yourself, operates slightly differently from this. You placed your timber on top of the jig, and then the jig referenced off the miter slot. The, just quickly, a couple of problems with this was, and you know, it's still absolutely usable. Putting the timber on top of the jig means you have to account for the thickness of the jig in your cut, which means you have to raise the bit up higher than you would normally it's just more challenging to reference than just referencing off the table surface alone. The second problem is when you're sliding the jig along the miter slot, you can no longer use the fence to set the depth. It's really challenging because it's difficult to get the fence and the miter slot to align perfectly. This coping sled makes those problems go away for two reasons. In this particular sled, the timber sits on the surface of the table as it would if you were just cutting. So you can imagine not using this at all, just making these cuts by hand, really carefully moving them across the route a bit. This jig allows the timber to sit in exactly that position. The second thing is, instead of referencing off the uh, miter slot, it's actually referencing off the fence. So you'd set your cut up, you'd set your bit up, whether it was a finger jointing bit or a rail and style bit. You'd set it up with the fence in the position that you need it to be and the height in the exact position in reference to the top of the router table. Just imagine you were doing the cut without any jig at all, without any coping sled at all. Make sure that your cut is at the right height and the right depth and then you can use the sled to get you really accurate results. First of all, this clear um, Perspex plexiglass strip is what runs along the fence. You can adjust its height and you can adjust its depth. So that means you can use it on whatever fence your router table has. In this case, right now at the height that it is, it's actually sitting within this T-slot. It doesn't matter, it's still a solid reference surface and it puts my jig at an appropriate depth back from the fence. So. I could drop it down and have it run along the actual fence, doesn't really matter in this application, but like I said, fully adjustable. What this means is you've got a reference surface that sits above the router bit and it's clear so you can see what's going on and it has the added benefit of potentially stopping chips and stuff flying up and hitting you in the face. Still wear eyeglasses, but it is nice that you can see through it and it is offering some protection. Okay, the body of this thing is just heavy duty um, plastic or some sort of resin and you've got this sliding block here which is what actually holds your timber in place and holds it square to the fence. So, the sliding block on one side has a strip of sandpaper stuck to it and the reference block which is on the rear side of the jig also has sandpaper stuck to it. Those two pieces mean that when you place your work inside the jig, awkwardly, when I'm doing it upside down, and then you close that and you tighten it up, it's actually held in place by those sandpaper bits, as well as the small amount of clamping pressure that you can apply using this sliding block. So, you've got the plastic thing which holds it against the fence, You've got these two blocks which hold your work square. Now notice this one can also rotate, so if you need to do pieces that are not exactly square, you can. And then the entire thing sits on the work surface, on the router table, 
and you run it along the fence and make your cuts. One really important feature is that you will need to use a sacrificial piece behind your work to prevent tear out. The jig will still work without that, but it will not protect your work from tear out. So what you do is just get a thin strip of um, timber, pine, whatever, and make sure it's the same thickness as your work and it sits exactly flat behind it. You clamp that in there with your work up against the fence, tighten that clamping block and having that piece behind your work piece means that the router bits can't tear out those fibers and will give you a really nice clean cut. One pro tip from a woodworker to another, stick some sandpaper on your sacrificial um, tear out piece and that will prevent any sliding of your workpiece. And make sure that your sandpaper stops below the level of where that cut will go, otherwise you're cutting your nice router bit through sandpaper, which over time will not be good for it. So I've just stopped it about a centimetre back from the front edge. You can, once you've torn this end up um, and it's no longer useful, you can knock that off peel a little bit of sandpaper back and just keep using one of these until it's you know too short to be used again but really it's just scrap with some double sided tape and some sandpaper so you know it's not a great expense and it really does protect your work. As with most things in woodworking, there's a million ways to do end grain cuts, but a coping sled makes it safe and repeatable uh, and, and fairly accurate. So if you've got a whole bunch to do, something like this keeps your fingers away from the blade and you can just run them through over and over without having to worry about kickback or things moving around. There's more information on this below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, head over to TimberCon to check out this and other cool stuff.